All right, uh, I am back after that little uh, technically induced hiatus. Uh, my computer has been repaired um, and I am good to go. And rather than you know, sending uh, the many emails that I have to send since I did not have access to a computer, um, I decided I don't wanna do that and I will do this instead. Um, and so, this is just a short discussion um, because I, I literally just got my computer back and I figured I should uh, um, I, I should mention that and, and so I'll, I'll make a video, but the, I, I had some ideas for videos, but a lot of them take more work than I could reasonably do in one day. Um, and so I figured I'd sort of just uh, parrot one of the TensorFlow quantum tutorials and mess around with that a little bit. Uh, and so we're talking today about barren plateaus and quantum variational circuits, which is sort of the quantum version of the vanishing gradient problem in neural networks um, and similar idea. Um, and so this is sort of uh, my understanding of it. It's, it's probably not going to be the best you know, information that you'll find on it. So I'll link a bunch of resources below, but it's sort of just a a brief overview because um, I'm not really a, a real, really a theorist so this sort of thing is not not usually what I think about uh, you know even with neural networks right I went through the the back propagation algorithm once and I have uh, never thought about it again it's just like you know you do it once and then you just use it and so the the core idea here is basically that as the number of qubits grows, um, so I'll do a little graph qubits, um, and the variance of the gradient um, decreases. And so uh, basically what the Baron plateaus problem is, and uh, this, um, this definition, as I'm presenting it, comes from um, the work Effect of Baron Plateaus on Gradient-Free Optimization, uh, first author Andrew Aerosmith. So um, just so I'm you know, completely transparent with where I'm taking these definitions. And once again, that will all be in the description. Um, so we have um, fundamentally the, you know, when we take this uh, derivative of any given, you know, um, I guess we should have a cost function, right? Um, uh, when we take this derivative of some parameter, right, uh, we can get the gradients. So we take the derivatives of all the parameters and we get the gradient, which I'm just going to write as G. Um, and so we have the, the problem is that the variance um, of this gradient is less than or equal to F of n, where um, f of n is uh, some some exponentially decreasing function. So we have some over, you know, a to the b, where a comma b, and natural numbers. So this is so basically, what does this mean? That means the variance is exponentially decreasing with the Oh, and n is the number of qubits. Um, so this is a uh, this is the fundamental problem. And so you might be saying one thing I should note, right? The variance decreasing isn't inherently always a problem, right? You could say, okay, all of my gradients are, um, you know, all, uh, depending on how I structure it, that my gradient variance for any parameter depending on the random circuit structure or something like that might be really low, but that it can still you know, be updated theoretically. Um, you know, you can still, you know, it doesn't matter if all the updates, you know, if all the partial derivatives are equal to, you know, almost exactly equal to 0 0.2, right? That's still updatable. The problem arises from the fact that the expectation value of this partial derivative that I'm gonna write here, um, or really the 
I mean, you, I say the gradient, but really this is sort of a element wise gradient. I'm not, I'm not taking the variance here of the whole or the expectation value of the whole sort of um, combined elements. So for example, um, yeah, so I, I just want to clarify that this, I say gradient, but this is really what I mean is on, for any given specific parameter in the gradient. Um, the problem is that this is equal to zero. So if you know that the expectation value is equal to zero, so let's just have, um, this is the partial derivative and this is qubit, or this is, uh, yeah, we'll just have qubit. So uh, actually, why don't we do, suppose we're making multiple measurements, right? So if we have high variance, and so the, just, it's just as we're going along, we're making measurements do, of the gradient, you know, high variance might look like this, right? Very high, but low variance around the expectation. So this is the expectation. You know, it'll look something like this. So the problem is that when the expectation is zero and the variance is low, then uh, let me add a new page. So let me see expectation equals zero variance equals you know, O of one over, I'm just gonna write it here as two without loss of generality of two to the N because N can be anything so we can um, expand that out. Um, the problem becomes, hey, wait a minute, gradients become almost zero, which means you can't learn right? If your gradients are 0 0.0001, right? You're, you're never going to learn the function you're trying to learn. Um, and so um, this is a pretty, uh, pretty severe problem. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of work to, to deal with this. Um, and so, uh, you know, why is this the case? Um, there, the, the derivation of this, the mathematical explanation. Um, I'll, I'll link uh, the original paper in, in the description and they have their proof and whatever in that. And so you can look, that, look at that. I, I'm not gonna worry about the derivation mainly because I haven't fully done it so I, I wouldn't be confident in explaining it. And so uh, the, the results here is that um, you know, we can see how really what we're you know, working on in, in near-term devices is increasing the number of qubits and the, the depth, right? And so the number of qubits increasing, if that results in exponentially decreasing gradients, that means it's, you know, if we get, if we're talking about advantage range, quantum advantage range, maybe 50 to 100 qubits, you know, you're going to get tiny updates. You're, you're not going to be able to update those via just gradient descent methods. Now, of course, this is purely on, I should write this down. This is on random initialization for random circuit structure, random niche, random circuit. So it's not, that's where a lot of uh, work has come from, either improving the initialization, there's like warm starting QAOA, stuff like that, or improving the circuit structure. And I know I've seen work pop up in my archive feed about that. I can't remember any right now. Um, and so these, um, oh, hold on one second. All right, I found it. I was just looking for, I remember seeing a paper about circuit structure and barren plateaus. And I couldn't remember what it was called, but I knew the first author was Zoe Holmes. And so I was able to find it. And so it's uh, one, one paper that I'll also put below is called Connecting Ansatz Expressibility to Gradient Magnitudes and Barren Plateaus. So basically, uh, you know, I, I, I skimmed it, but uh, if I remember correctly, basically what's saying here is uh, if you have more, um, a more expressive, you know, circuit structure, so a, a, a circuit that's able to learn uh, a larger class of functions, um, then you uh, have more problems with gradients and barren plateaus. And so, you know, the, maybe the takeaway is that for your problem, you know, we can't just do, ah, uh, just throw a dense neural network at it or a convolutional neural network, 
Like those are the basic like two layers of every like classical machine learning system, right? You just throw it at everything and they work. That isn't necessarily going to be the case and um, you know, real work applied quantum machine learning will probably require um, uh, more circuit evaluation and design properties than, you know, to train than, than maybe we initially expected. Yeah, so I'll link that. I just had to find that paper. Um, okay, so anyway, getting back to it. Yeah, so this is the problem, right? We have expected value of gradients at zero and the variance decreases with exponentially with the number of qubits. So what do we do about this? I said there's a number of solutions. I'll put some of them below. Um, there's also, um, what is it called? Well, I can't remember. More. I just, there's, there's a lot of work going on with this. I'll just say that. I, I couldn't remember what I was about to say on it. And so this is um, no derivation here, but this is the problem. And this is really key to understanding a lot of contemporary research in um, quantum machine learning this is really all you need to know, right? So now let's look at this in, uh, in TensorFlow Quantum. And this is basically, uh, um, just this code is extremely similar. I, I modified it a little bit, but extremely similar to the tutorial for barren plateaus, which I do link in the code. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want to have any um, problems with who I attribute the code to. This is extremely similar. In some cases, I just copied functions from that tutorial. So, just a heads up. So if we go over to the code, maybe I can zoom in once more. Yeah, so this is the tutorial link that I have, um, the usual imports, right? So I wanna scroll down real quick um, to the main loop that we're gonna be doing. Um, so we have two loops, one where we increase the number of qubits and one where we increased the depth for constant qubits. Um, and they function the exact same. You're just changing different variables. So I'm going to ignore the depth one for now. Um, so for this, for this one, we keep track of the variances. We iterate over however many qubits we're given at a given depth. Um, so we create the qubits. We have a single parameter, right? Because you could do the whole gradient and look at every single parameter, but it doesn't really matter. And it would just add a huge amount of cost to evaluating large circuits, right? If you have a thousand parameters, whoo. That's an expensive uh, calculation, right? But if you have one parameter, you can do huge networks and you don't have to worry as much about it. And so we then generate uh, a collection of just these random circuits. Uh, and then we calculate the variance. So that's a general time sort of um, workflow. So let's look at how we generate these circuits. Um, this is exactly from the original paper by, I believe it was McLean, I, I think that's who wrote the original paper, which I will also link below. Um, so we create the circuit, we do our, we rotate our Y on each qubit, and then we randomly pick um, the circuit structure and the circuit initialization, and we entangle it with control C operations. So that's pretty much, yeah, that's all there is to the circuit, it's just we just randomly create it. Um, we randomly create the gates and we randomly create the weights. And so that's that's it. Um, and so this is why I remember the Baron Plateaus as originally displayed is only for these random circuit structures. If you have more defined initializations or more defined circuit structures, you can avoid or solve some of the problems of Baron Plateaus and vanishing gradients. And so to create the uh, gradient variance, uh, there's two types of readout ops. The original one from the paper um, where they just read out the computational basis of the first two qubits. Um, I also just tried out one just out of curiosity to see what it would be like, um, where you take the readout of every single qubit and you sum them up. Um, so we have the um, parameter shift differentiator, as always. Um, we have a sampled expectation that we're computing, right? Because it's... Uh, it's um, the, uh, you know, we're, we're not doing analytic ex, uh, expectations here. We're doing um, sampling because 
barren plateaus is a you know, real world problem. So we want to simulate the real world. So what this does is it takes um, repetitions number of, in this case, which is going to be a thousand. It takes a, a thousand samples from the circuit and calculates the expectation value. Um, so we pass in the circuits that we created right down here in these circuits, we convert them to a tensor, um, a quantum tensor. Um, and then we initialize these values that we're gonna, the weights basically that we're gonna look at. So we have um, these random initializations and we create one weight per circuit. So this is you know more of the random weights. Um, and then we get the expectation value by passing in the circuit, the readout ops, um, how many times we want to repeat it. And we have the one symbol, right, that we care about, um, this one param that we care about. Um, and we, uh, the, the weights, right, we're providing the symbols um, and this, uh, and this sort of um, structure, right, that these are the weights. Um, that we're saying for each of the circuit having a different weight because we don't we're not actually training anything right we don't care about managing this or updating gradients we just want to calculate the gradients and get the variance that's all we care about um, so we get the variance and we return it and so that's basically the loop and so if we look we say okay these are the definitions we're doing up to 16 qubits we're doing a depth of 100 so this is, these are deep circuits in fact, if you do really shallow circuits, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is true, but in my experimentation, the, the gist I got was that it wasn't as noticeable, the barren plateaus problem. So, you know, this is one of those things. In fact, this, when I'm writing this code, I was like, hey, there's some good research ideas in here. You could very well take these ideas, take the TensorFlow tutorial in this code and, uh, you know, experiment with this, play around with it. And just, you know, if you do some new ideas, right, there's there's a paper quality, you know, improvements to be had here. And so, you know, you could take it around, maybe investigate barren plateaus and shallow circuits, or I don't know, maybe someone's already done that. But a depth 100 circuit, um, they investigate, I think, depth 50 to, 100, to 500, but it's sort of like, doesn't, like depth 100, like that isn't the problems that we're talking about. So it's weird that, you know, that, that would even come up, right? Because it's not near term in the slightest depth, like 10, the maximum of a near term or something like that. And so that that's just an interesting note, right? So we have, we create a hundred circuits. So we'll have a hundred different gradients that we'll evaluate the variance of. We go up to 16 qubits. We have a hundred deep circuit. Um, I compare, for example, uh, the ones as presented in the paper and uh, calculating the expectation value from measuring all of the operations. Um, we calculate the expectation value by using 1000 shots and we print it. Um, down here, we use 12 qubits and we vary the uh, depth from 1 to 200. And so I'm not going to run the code. The code is pretty slow. So I, I have already run the code. So I'll show it here. So this one right here is the depth. Um, so we can see that um, the, the depth from, you know, zero to 200 or 20 to 180, um, decreases, but it's sort of, uh, sort of, uh, plateaus. And this is a common pattern you'll see in the original paper. Um, you will, it's worth noting that, uh, let's see, I'm going to bring it up and they're figure four, right? Um, depending on the depth, um, the plateaus, um, or depending on the number of qubits, the plateaus exist at different points. So if you only have 10 qubits, you can go 500 depth, and that's the same. You, know, you don't have any problems as going with 200 depth, for example. So um, that that's really the key takeaway here, or a key takeaway here is that uh, that it's it's more qubit dependent than it is depth dependent because you can see I can increase all I want. Um, this is going to stay here. And if I did another example, right, of 10 qubits, it would go here and then here. Um, and so that's, hold on one second. All right, yeah, so what I was just talking about, I just ran the experiment for, 
um, to, to help clarify. So here we can see 12 qubits versus six qubits. So you can see much like in figure four, I believe of the original paper, let me look real quick. Um, yeah, figure four, we can see that a depth is not as much of a problem as number of qubits um, because this uh, plateaus um, at, at, at a variance. It doesn't keep decreasing with depth. And so um, here we can see the results of a constant depth, uh, 100 depth, and uh, the, um, uh, the ignore the measure all at the top. That's a outdated, uh, outdated uh, title. Um, but the takeaway here is you can see uh, this will keep decreasing. Um, Notice that it, it, it doesn't always look as though it's decreasing because of the way, you know, it gets exponentially smaller every time, but that exponent, you know, gets very, very close. So each, you know, given increase results in a very numerically small decrease, even if it's relative, still exponential. Um, so yeah, these are the two um, takeaways here, right? Um, that barren plateaus and vanishing gradients are a problem largely dependent on qubits as opposed to depth of circuits. Um, but there has been some works to solve, you know, some works to solve this. Um, and so that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so this was sort of the idea of barren plateaus and the implementation in TensorFlow Quantum, which was largely inspired and in somewhat taken from the tutorial on the TensorFlow Quantum homepage. So yeah, I'll put the TensorFlow Quantum tutorial and the um, three papers I mentioned, sorry, four papers, oh, no, just three, three papers I mentioned below, which are um, Barron Plateaus and Quantum Neural Network Training Landscapes by Jared McLean, um, The Effect of Barron Plateaus on Gradient Free Optimization by Andrew Aerosmith, and the, let me scroll up, and the Connecting Anzots Expressibility to Gradient Magnitudes and Barren Plateaus by Zoe Holmes. And so those will all be below. And that's pretty much it. It probably could have been shorter. I realized I sort of repeated myself a lot. Um, but before I turn off this recording, I just want to say it's, uh, I, I noticed, um, I actually just discovered how to do this. Um, but I went to the about page on my little channel. I saw that in total, there have been more than a thousand views. And I just want to say that's pretty cool. I hope that at least one person is able to uh, learn something from, from this because, you know, that, that's me. I, I, I'm learning as I do this as well. So yeah, uh, next time we'll hopefully be back with some pretty cool replicating papers. This time, papers, replicating papers I did not write but do not have source code released. So who knows, maybe I'll debunk them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that's it.